boxing fans, what's the deal? We're going to talk about some welterweight. That big welterweight fight is coming up. Wait till y'all get up in here. I'm excited for this welterweight fight, man. Get to see Errol Spence back in action. And it's a tough fight he got too, man. This ain't no, this ain't no little warm up. Danny Garcia is far from a warm up. Let y'all get in here, DB. What's up, man? I know you're ready for this fight, man. This uh, Spence versus Danny Garcia. I know I talk about the heavyweights, man, but this is a damn good welterweight fight, and it's a really good fight for Spence on his way back. James was good. Architect One, what's up? Lawrence Williams was good, man. Y'all gonna hit that like button for me when y'all make your way up in here. I know people seeing this title probably probably gonna be more one to hear what I gotta say about Garcia and Spence. Ain't really thing going on in heavyweight, man. Just uh, let me touch on that real quick. St. Cruising was good. Um, as far as a little heavyweight stuff from this weekend, uh, I talked. All right, y'all. I don't know what the hell happened there. Can y'all hear me? James said you about six nine. Are you? Forgot where I was even at, man. <laughs> oh, the heavyweight stuff. Uh, Fabio Wardley. I seen him. Um, the heavyweight. I know he's under. Uh, he works. He's cool with Dillian White, but. Yo, man, that, that kid's not that bad, man. For somebody that hasn't had, you know, they didn't have an amateur career and he had like four little novice fights. But if you watch that kid move and again, look at the level of opposition, right? But just watching him for somebody that hasn't, that, you know, just really learning how to fight, man. I know he's had, a, he's spent some time sparring Usyk and Dillian White, but his movements are pretty impressive, man. The way he can stick and move, just his fluidity for a guy. Let you know that he's just a natural athlete, man. So they're talking about him possibly being on that, uh, Dillian White, Pavek, and Undercard. And another good fight on the Undercard, man, is Sergey Kuzman taking on uh, Martin Bacoli at heavyweight. Man, that's a good fucking fight, man. I was watching some more of uh, Bacoli today. He puts his punches together well, and he has, you know, a nice little work rate, man. I like his work rate for a big heavyweight. He's kind of been on a redemption tour ever since that loss to uh, Michael Hunter. Both these dudes' only loss is to Michael Hunter, Kuzman, and Bacoli. And, uh, my man Bacoli been like on a little redemption tour. I know he fought Kevin Johnson, stopped him. Marius Walk stopped him. The Otoli Pereira stopped him. And Rodney Hernandez stopped him. I know you guys may say, oh, Mr. Boxing, what you mean, Marius Walk? He old. He hard to stop, though. And look how he performed against the out-of-shape Dillian White. And Kevin Johnson, you know, he's a slippery old bastard. You know what I mean? It's hard to stop him. Um, shit, he made Dubois have to dig down and go some rounds. I know AJ stopped him. And uh, another creation kid has stopped him uh Malas has stopped him but that was kind of a flaky stoppage but uh and then Pereira was a Olympian for Ecuador and he you know so they're just little tough little journeymen man that are, that are hard to stop he went he just been stopping all these cats so him and Kuzman gonna be a good one man that's gonna be a good fight I think uh Bacole gonna get him I think he's gonna outwork him man but he leaves a lot of opportunities to get hit himself Derek Bailey what's up all right, man. Let me let me uh let me talk about this Garcia and uh, Errol Spence fight. Um, look now, just the human nature of things, right? If you get into a car accident, I know somebody will come here and say, "But Mr. Boxen, so and so got into an accident and he was okay." Mr. Boxen, so and so, this have look. It's different for everybody, man. Yes, that lets me know that there's a possibility, and it's been shown that you can get into a horrific car accident. And come back and do great things but that doesn't necessarily mean it works for everybody now what i will what i will say is this if the doctors and everybody is, is okaying him i'm not a doctor right so obviously if they're okaying him that means that he's fit to fight and i don't think they'll put him in there if he wasn't fit to fight so i will say that and you would think him going in there against somebody like danny garcia lets you know he's okay and he's 100 percent. that's a perception that we get right or you can look at it like well shit Maybe they throw him in there with Garcia because if something, if he were to lose or he isn't 100%, if he isn't 100%, let's let him, if he were to lose, lose to a guy like Danny Garcia, then lose to uh, Joe Blow the tune-up. You know what I mean? So I would way rather have him go in there and test where he's at against Danny Garcia than Joe Blow the tune-up because that would look really bad. At least if you lose to Garcia, a, Garcia is a formidable fighter. Now, when I look at the styles of it, 
I got Errol Spence, man. Um, Danny, look, Danny's one of them dudes where he's not really great at nothing, right? He's not. He doesn't have like crazy hand speed. He's not the the most powerful guy. He doesn't have the longest reach. Not the tallest welterweight. He's just solid at everything. Just solid. You know, what I mean? he's a real solid fighter. Um, but when I break it down, man, I don't see how he can outbox Spence from the outside. I don't see that happening. I don't see him roughing Spence up on the inside and out dueling him or uh, bringing the physicality that Spence can't handle. Now, this is Spence if he's a hundred, you know, if he's a Spence, the arrow that I seen. My man, one LVZ, what's good, bro? Let me go ahead and get you one of these. My man, one LVZ. Hey, bro, seen that, uh, that vid too, man. That Kaepernick and uh, the, the Navy people with the mess shit was crazy, man. Um, Y'all got to go check that out, man. It was like some Navy training, and they're going to have the dude getting attacked. You know, the training they do when they got the dude with the dogs, uh, the dude in the suit, and the dogs come attack them, and they act like they're doing a routine uh, little training session. That shit was ridiculous, man. He gonna, the dude going to have a Kaepernick jersey on. Anyways, man, and that makes me scratch my head when I hear Paula Malinaji say the bullshit that he says, but then shit like that is still going on. But it's made up, right? Fuck out of here. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm being sensitive. You're being sensitive. You know, whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, but Arrow's gonna gonna bust him up on the inside. Then Danny, his ass bruises easily, right? So I see him getting bruised up, marked up, but he is tough than a motherfucker though, man. So I just don't see how he can I don't see how he can beat EJ, man, because he can't he can't really beat him from the outside. Like I say, he doesn't have the reach like that. And his thing is more of timing, and he want to catch you with, you know, that overhand left and overhand rights and things like that. Uh, I just don't see what he can do, man. He's solid at everything, but Arrow is great at a few things. And one thing that he showed me is he can move, because at first I was like, man, maybe Arrow can't move all that great. But he can move a little bit. He can stick his jab. He can box. He can box from long range. Up and close, he's a dog. Um... And one thing about Danny that I know that he has that he struggles with is movement and a jab. And Arrow has a damn good stiff jab. He's trying to hurt you with his jab. And he can move a little bit. And I think he can frustrate Danny. I think he has the skill to frustrate Danny. Every time I seen Danny look shaky was guys that was using good jabs, making them miss, can stand up to him. He can mix it up with him like Porter and Her Her Herrera and Thurman, all them dudes, man, that these other two are had close fights with. I thought Peterson, man, I, I did a post fight after the Peterson Garcia on my old channel. Man, I was going off, man, because I thought Peterson should have been. Peterson's a dog. He ain't no damn boxing move type. Man, he's a, he's a dog, and I was pissed off that he had that game plan, man. That shit was pissing me off with Peterson. I thought he could have won that fight. Some people still thought he won, but I thought he lost, man, by like a round or two. But I thought it was a winnable fight for uh, Peterson. But anyways, um, yeah, Danny... <laughs> I don't say he can win this fight, man. Just based on their styles, yo, I don't see how he can get it done. He's not gonna out-jab him. His thing is just if he can just sit down and, and get and get Arrow to either fall asleep, standing in front of him, falling asleep, standing straight up, boom, he get hit with something big. Um, then Arrow, when I break him, when I watch him, he does this thing where he gets in his stance, right? He gets in his stance and he's a lefty, right? So he'll kind of lean back with his feet just planted. He'll just lean back and sit there sometime where his feet are planted. His feet are planted down. His feet are planted. He's not moving, but he's leaning back. He just leans. And that's great that you can lean from the waist up, but sometimes his feet are a little bit cemented. Maybe Danny can catch him when he's doing that. Maybe catch Arrow backing up in a straight line or something like that. But... Danny got some dog, man, but I don't think he got more than Arrow. Arrow just bigger, stronger, quicker to the punch. I mean, and Danny will like for you to take the lead sometimes, especially if he feels that there's a little bit of threat there. He'll want to counter you. You know what I mean? But letting Arrow just be first, though? I don't know, man. I don't know. And it's not like Danny's just master counter punch either, though. But What's your opinion on I, events without Carlos Hernandez said, what's my opinion about boxing events without a crowd? Um, shit, man. It should go back to a lot of them guys' amateur days. Because not every amateur fight has a big crowd. Sometimes there's just a few people in the crowd. You guys all, you know, them dudes always having gym wars. So, but to me, it's going to affect the guys that want big crowds, that love big crowds, right? 
like Anthony Joshua. Yeah, they feed off the crowd, like AJ, for instance, right? AJ was the one that said uh, he loves the 90,000 people and he loves the atmosphere of, right? Now, that doesn't mean that he won't be able to fight when it's not like that. But I'm saying the guys that feed off the crowd and love that type of energy, it's, it might be tough for them, you know? But usually when you get in that ring, man, it's you and your opponent, you know what I mean? So the motherfucker in front of you is throwing hands. That's the person you got to deal with, not who's sitting up in the crowd, not if they're singing songs, not if the momentum swings and it's your way because of your hometown crowd, whatever. I actually like this, man. But you know what? I, uh, when I watched that them Ukrainian heavyweights uh, fight yesterday, when I watched Serenko, um, yeah, I got to see that fight. Serenko, he fought Pavlo. What's that dude's name? Pavlo Krolinko. He struggled. He got in the first round with a good overhand right. Dude landed the overhand right, right in his face area on Serenko, right? Then when Serenko regained and recovered a little bit, Dude kept throwing the overhand right, but then it kept hitting. He was aiming at the top of uh, Serenko's head. He was catching it with it with his glove. But anyways, at that event, it was a Usyk prom uh, promoted event. There was actually a crowd there. It wasn't a lot of people. Maybe like from the eyeballs, maybe like 200 people probably. I'm not sure. Something like that. But they're all sitting next to each other. No ass, no nothing. Just look like a smaller venue, like a little small hotel fight. You know what I mean? Uh, so I guess we'll see, man. But I, I know Eddie Hearn make a buck when he throw like joshua up in there he's trying to make some money off that you know what i mean but james said uh i will say this you can communicate better with your coach but your opponent can too with no crowd as well yeah you communicate better with your coach but shit by that time man you should already know what the hell you got to do but i understand what you're saying though your coach want to give you some directions tell you what to do you know, throw, you know, throw, throw the jab, slip, hold. Speaking of slipping and hold, Serenko, let me touch back on him real quick, the Ukrainian heavyweight. Um, when he did get hurt in that first round, one thing I noticed, man, is he didn't grab. He didn't go to grab. So that was kind of a red flag to me because you get hurt like that, they teach you to grab, hold, get your legs up under you. First thing he did was put his guard back up, and then he started throwing punches. And I was like, man, had he been there with somebody a little bit more clever, somebody a little bit more tricky, somebody a little bit stronger and better, could have been lights off for the prospect last night man so probably want to get that holding you know what i mean hold man clinch grab it's okay to do it the, some of the best and done it you know floyd got clocked against mosley hell ali would get hurt sometimes he'll play to the crowd and play to his opponent like he's not hurt but grab hold larry holmes would do it you know what i mean it's okay to grab and hold man <laughs> you know what i mean learn that james says i worry about ej when he sticks his jab up to turn his opponent and just leaves it out there. He may get clipped. So you, so you think uh, Spence holding his jab out there, probably get him clipped? Yeah. Well, that's a good point, because if he gets clipped holding his jab out there this time, it's going to be the, the jab, which is his right hand. If he leaves it out there too long, the punch he will get clipped with is a Garcia left hook, and that's Garcia's best punch. So Arrow better not leave it out there too long. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> his ass get clipped with a left hook may do the stanky leg but this one and i know people gonna say but mr boxer garcia ain't never been knocked out though but shit man styles make fights y'all i don't see Keith, i don't see arrow coming in there trying to do no keith thurman trying to run i don't think he'll be as wild as uh i don't think he'll be as wild as porter he's a more controlled fighter but he will put pressure on you while he's under control you know what i mean and uh See, my wife thinks that Arrow, and that, and look, man, nobody's Superman, y'all. And I know, but Mr. Boxing, so-and-so came back from Max. Yeah, but, man, everybody ain't the same. And usually, man, if you get into some type of car accident, your teeth get knocked out your skull or your teeth's cracked or whatever, you you getting surgery and, and all that type of shit, man. It's hard for me to believe that I had to just take nothing out of you, as if, like, everything's just A-OK. -okay. But I guess we'll see on fight night. I, and people say, but Mr. Boxer, they'll, they'll know on sparring. Yeah, but we'll really know on fight night where there's no headgear and Garcia ain't trying to take it easy. He ain't going to let up. None of that shit. He's going to come full throttle at him if he gets some hurt. What's another one? Uh, Spence had reconstruction work on his mouth face. It would swell up, question marks. That's what we just talked about. Uh, naturally, people would love to have fans in the seats, in the boxer's seat. 
off of that, but as a boxing fan watching boxing events, I would watch them again when the crowds pick up. What do you think about Chisora and Yusik? Uh, Chisora and Yusik? Man. I gotta see how Yusik deals with somebody that's gonna really lay some leather on him, that's not gonna wait. And Chisora, one thing about Derek, man, win or lose, he's not gonna wait on nothing. He's gonna bring it to you. And we'll see how Yusik handles this, man, because he didn't look all that great, man. He didn't look all that, even against Bill, he got the stoppage, but he didn't look fantastic against Tony. And he definitely didn't look great against uh, Chaz Witherspoon. He was getting hit with some good jabs. Chaz was pretty much taking his shots till he got peppered and just couldn't take it no more. But you still gonna have a lot to prove, man. I, yes, I know he was a undisputed champion cruiserweight. He fought in the World Series of Box. Yeah, but I'm talking about now. I ain't talking about shit that happened six, seven years. I'm talking about now. Tassur's gonna really test him, man. He's gonna really take him. He's gonna, he's gonna get up in his grill, test him. You six should be able to turn him, pepper him with uh, hand speed and you know, land some good combinations and keep him at bay, but it takes a lot to keep Chisora at bay, man. He just ain't just some easy motherfucker to keep out there. Yeah, it may look easy when Klitschko did it or when uh, Hay was in his prime and he did it. Don't necessarily mean Usyk's going to be able to do it, but and Usyk's usually like a, like, I ain't going to say pity pat puncher, but he's like a, you know, six, seven punch combination guy, which is good. You putting your hands together, but you really got to, you really got to put Chisora in his place. Like, you got to throw some bombs at him, man. I'm not sure Usyk is ready to bomb him like that. And even when Hay was using his elusiveness, he was still catching him with big shots. Usyk really isn't, he doesn't come across like the big, I'm blank, going land big shots on him. He wants to just get you with speed, quickness, pepper you up, kind of take your will with that. And I know a cruise where he was doing it, but Chisura is not gassy. If he's not going to put his guard up and just for the perfect opportunity to punch, he's going to just swing and go for the fences, man. It's going to be interesting to see how that works out for Usyk. They got some tough fights coming up, man. Rosario and Endeavor Chinko. Them dudes got some tough fights coming up. But the Charlo should get the job done. Um, good, interesting fights. Definitely not no easy competition. Uh, they come to bang, though, man. And whenever you come to bang, you're, you're always going to leave an opportunity for the guy to hit you, man. And You know what I mean? So that's, that's the exciting part about them is they come to fight and they come for knockouts and they come to entertain. But at the same time, though, Whenever you fight in that style, man, you're giving your opponent opportunity to land in you as well. And it's great for us, the fans. But they should get the job done, but it's not going to be easy, man. That Rosario's a, uh, you know what I mean? He's a tough dude, man. Debrachenko's tough, too. And they proved that in their, you know, their last few fights. You know, James says, I'm waiting on this Roy Jones Jr. fight, but for some reason, I always wanted Tony to fight Tyson. Yeah. I wanted Tony and Tyson to fight around that 03, 02, when Mike was at the end. Well, be, by around the time he fought Lennox. Um, JT, look, James, Tony, and Mike Tyson, could y'all imagine the presser for that one? Because JT ain't backing down from shit. Whether he got a gut hanging over his trunks or not, you ain't going to scare James, Tony. Not to say that Roy Jones is scared, or you know, but JT, you're not going to scare him. He'll talk gang of shit to you and fight you in the parking lot. You know what I mean? But JT tough, man. And he always, look, JT to me was at his best. James was at his best when there was a power puncher in front of him that was trying to knock him the fuck out. Or if you try to come to him and bring all this uh, um, energy and throw all types of punches like Giroff or like Giroff wanted to be busy, right? The, busy, the more busier you are, the more you're going to get hit with counters, right? Sam Peter coming with the big blows. You see how Sam Peter changed his style up in the second fight? Sam said, fuck that. Fuck who next? You know how you say, who next? He said, I'm about to use his jab next. I ain't about to go in there and try to just windmill, or not windmill, but just throw big crazy hooks and overhands trying to knock out James Tony. I'm going to get countered to death. You know what I mean? So that would have been interesting to see Tyson, especially in the first few rounds against James Tony, because James will make you miss and make you pay. Now, I'm not saying James will knock out Mike Tyson, but hey, man, you start getting hit with some motherfucking clean counter right hands that you don't see coming. I don't give a fuck who you are. It's going to start busting you up a little bit, and especially around that 03 time with Mike. A little frustration to fuck Mike up, man. Y'all know how Mike was when he get frustrated. He'll fuck around, bite your ear off, <laughs> twist your elbow in a clinch. Uh, <laughs> Mike liable to do anything, man. Indeed. I see my man blood up in here. 
My man, a retro boxing documentary. My man, Blood Boxing was good, bro. Are you about to go on the walk yourself? Yeah, I'm out here, man. Try to get this little walk in. I, was, I got some shots up earlier. About to get a little walk in and go back, get some more shots up. Call it a day with the working out. Good point, Blood. He said JT a bad matchup because he can take Mike's power too. Yeah, I was just saying about Sam Peter and all them. He can take that shit, man. I know that sounds crazy, taking Mike Tyson's bitch, but shit. If Evander Holyfield can do it, I put my money on it that James Tony can do it as well. Because he's proven to have a great chin. This ain't just me wishing and guessing shit. He's proven to have a good, at the least, he's proven to have a, a damn good chin and a damn good counter puncher. That's proven. Couldn't uh, counter Roy. He was too damn fast back then, but y'all get my drift. Uh, Benji the Shooter, Garcia Spencer going with Spence, bro. And I usually start cooking early, man. I don't do the, I know some, the brothers I follow, they wait so much people come in the building and then start cooking. I cook early, man, so you missed that part. But pretty much, bro, I got uh, Spence winning. I think Garcia is a tough comeback fight, especially after a car accident, getting your teeth knocked out your head and concussions and surgery on your face and all that type of shit. But uh, I just don't see how Garcia can beat him on the inside. I think Arrow's gonna bring the physicality to him. I don't think Danny, he, 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 he marks up easy. He's gonna get busted up easy. Spence is an accurate puncher. He, he's not. Uh, he's aggressive and has phys and he's physical, but he's not over the top wild. You know what I mean? He has aggression, but he knows how to tame his aggression and fight a sufficient fight with his punch selection, man. And I think he's gonna hurt Garcia to the body. Yeah, that's one thing about Danny I noticed too. When he gets on the inside, he wants to rest sometimes, and we know Spence ain't gonna really let you rest on the inside like that. Um. And I see blood says Spence by UD. I'm going with UD, bro. And I'm damn near going with a stoppage only because, and I know Mr. Boxing, Garcia never been stopped. Right. But styles make fights. And I think Garcia was sitting in the wheelhouse. I think I think he's gonna get to the point where he's gonna get so frustrated that he can't beat Arrow from the outside. He's gonna to want to stay on the inside and just say, fuck it. Let me just try to find something mid-range. And I think that might get him in trouble trying to fight a mid-range fight and get pieced up with clean shots. You know what I mean? But my, my bet, though, is uh, Errol Spence by unanimous decision. But a knockout, I wouldn't put that past, though, based on the way that Danny Garcia wants to throw his hooks and he wants to be on the inside. And he wants to fight a short-range fight. He's not trying to fight you from the outside and use a Larry Holmes jab and pivot and all that. Now he wants to be right mid-range. And that could get him in trouble. And I and see Keith and them was mixing it up. Because you got to respect his power. Like Keith and all those guys, they mix it up. Uh, Peterson was mixing it up. I think Arrow will mix it up, but to the point where he's going to be like, all right, I'm going to mix it up a little bit, but I'm also going to let you know who's, you know, whose ring this is. And if I think if Garcia try to oblige and step up and put his foot on the pedal and say, nah, I'm going to meet you halfway, might see a knockout based on styles. You know, but I'm going to go with uh, Spence by decision. I'm going to say, like, I think it'd be decisive but competitive. Decisive but competitive. Like a 117, 110, you know, some shit like that. Lawrence Williams says, have you heard of Louis Pina? He is fighting Michael Coffey this weekend. I heard of Michael Coffey. No, I heard of the other cat. I heard of Coffey, though. What do you think of Showtime's upcoming boxing schedule? First of all, I'm happy that there's a fucking boxing schedule. <laughs> That's number one. But it's, a, I mean, you got the Charlo great I, I love it man i love it i'm just now i'm just curious to see what they're gonna do with the you know if it's gonna be like how espn's fight's been with no crowd like i said out there in the ukraine that Usyk promoted card he just had this weekend they had a crowd so i'm curious to see how they're gonna do things but based on how they've been doing the other sports here in the states i most likely think it's gonna be no crowd and it's gonna be really a good or a crazy scene to see our big fights over here with no crowd you know what I mean? Like a Spence versus Garcia or Wilder Fury or something like that. Like how they gonna deal with them type of fights with no crowd. Or what they do what the NBA is doing with that fake crowd shit where they got the monitor set up and they got like a fake crowd. Or not a fake crowd, but uh, how the fuck they got it? They got like a big screen on, on like the monitors and it's real people. It's yeah, it's a virtual crowd. The people are tuning in from their home on their computers. It's like family of the players and uh, selected crowd. 
like 300 fans on the screen or some shit, but. About uh, Mr. There's No Racism. Look, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look, man. Pauly has his right to say whatever he wants, right? But when you say shit like racism don't exist, you're, you know, you're trying to play with my intelligence, man. I just seen a video today where I was just telling y'all they had like some Navy training where they had a dog attack a dude. You know how the cops do their training when the dude have on the big suit and the dogs come attack him and they get the guy down and stay down. The Navy did it with a dude with a Kaepernick jersey on. And then the dude that's getting attacked was like, I'll stay down, I'll kneel, I'll kneel. And the crowd, oh no, he said I will kneel now. Cause he was like giving in, like I'll kneel, I'll give up, I'll give up. And Paulie knows better. Plus he's from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. And look, he grew up in a culture where he's seen a lot of racism. So why would you come out and say, now there's no racism, racism when six miles from where I live, a dude by the name of George Floyd, got killed in the street about six miles away from where I live, man. And you gonna sit here with a straight face and tell me that we're just making this up, this is a figment of our, our, of our imagination. And then for those of you that say things like, uh, what's this new term they're saying? The cancel culture. This is some shit I just heard within the last week. I'll say this, man, that people saying, uh, you know, you, you just can't say your opinion no more, this era is soft and all that. For some things I do think this era is soft, but when you say things like that to me, and some of you may get offended, but I'm just being real, man. When you say shit like, uh, you can't say what you want no more, to me, especially when you're trying to cover for a racist, that to me makes me think like you're trying to say, oh man, I mean, what happened to the good old days when you just call a black man a nigger? I mean, geez, you guys are so sensitive nowadays. Like, that's how that comes off to, to me as a black man. All right, so, yeah, you can say what you want to say, but just know that you, you could possibly lose your job. You know what I'm saying? So, Paulie can say what the fuck you want to say. Just know that it's not going to be respected by everybody. But for you to say there's no racism, it's all made up, and you're, you know, you guys have a victim mentality. First of all, I've never had a victim mentality, ever, and, and at, ever in my life, I've had a victim mentality. You know what I'm saying? But what you're not going to do is try to play with my intelligence and use that against me when I know I see racism. You know what I mean? I did a video years ago, blood. And I've, and I've experienced it. Blood, you in here. Blood, you remember that video I did, Blood? Probably about five, six years ago when I was talking about black business owners. And I live in Minnesota, man. It's a beautiful state. But if you think for one minute that I haven't experienced any type of racism, you're you out of your mind. Just dealing just, just with going into different customers' homes. I've serviced over like 1,500 customers, man. You know what I mean? And all my own business became suited in our apparel completely professional i had people talk to me through their screens because i i don't even look this is a whole different video man but paulie was full of shit and he knows he's full of shit there's no racism in 2020 it's all made up it's overblown get the fuck out of here i just seen a man six miles away from my house get murdered in the fucking street george floyd man levi khan says should Uner dertikos just to heavyweight more money for fights for him there or Dortico's a heavyweight. I mean, he's a, uh, they call him a KO doctor. So he got some good, you know, uh, got a good punch. I'll see how, we'll have to see how it translates up to heavyweight though. But shit, Gassy of them moved up. Usyk did moved up. So it wouldn't surprise me if he does move up. Everybody else is moving up from a uh, cruiser. that was around that little tournament that they had. So shit, why not? Try your luck. Uh, does anyone know if we'll ever see the to the WBSS Dortitos Breedis? I don't know. Oh, it's about the uh, World Boxing Super Series. Shit, I'm not sure, man. I haven't kept track of that tournament since, uh, or, or I know they got a new one, but I haven't really been keeping up with that tournament, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Benji the Shooter says, I want to see you guys versus Crawford. That would be a good fight. Yes, it would. You guys is a crafty, a crafty guy, man. Rangy knows how to use his uh, reach and fights tall. He's crafty. What else? Mm -hmm. 
Question. Frank Sanchez versus F.A. Ajagba. Shit, man, if you asked me this like six, seven months ago, I probably would pick F.A., but Sanchez looked kind of fluid, and Ajagba looked like he... Look, they're bringing Ajagba along, man, well, in my opinion. Rodney Hurt Hernandez type of fights. Uh, Demer Reason. I know he got dropped against Kalazi. They're bringing him up to see, you know, just to test him the right way. But right now, the day if they fought today, I'll probably go with Sanchez, man. Be honest with you, just seems a little bit more fluid, better defense, uh, seems more defensively responsible, quicker hands. Uh, he might fuck around, outwork the Jaguar, but Jaguar big and strong, man. But I want to see him move his head more. Ruiz versus Brazil. Yeah. Possibly. Uh, but Ruiz talking about Areola and uh well Areola was talking about Ruiz rather. He was saying that they're talking. That was like a couple a couple weeks ago. About my about not about a month ago. But I wouldn't mind seeing it for a little comeback fight. Dave Allen versus Huey Fury next on the zone. Who do you like? Fury versus Dave Allen? Man, Fury gonna beat the hell out of Dave Allen. He gonna pepper the shit out of him. Like some potato salad, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He gonna pepper the shit up. But Dave Allen's tough. He got a chin. But Huey Fury ain't about, you know, trying to knock you out. I think he's gonna just, he's gonna wrap him up on the inside. Dave Allen's not be able to get no work off, in my opinion. Then they're gonna separate. And then he's gonna put a jab in his face and use his lateral movement. It's gonna be a clean sweep of rounds, in my opinion, for that one. Um, Fabio Wardley looked good. Yeah, he Could did. Beat Joe Joyce or nah? Ooh. And Joe Joyce punches slow as all oh, get out. <laughs> but he is durable and, he is durable and strong. Um man, Wardley look good though, man. I know again, right against the opposition. I will go with Joyce right now, but let me see Wardley in there with like a Dave Allen. Somebody's a little bit tougher. Somebody that won't just fall after getting hit with a good shot. I need to see a little bit more of him though, man. And I know I was just bringing up Dave Allen, but Dave Allen's good enough to uh Fuck around, get an upset victory, man. You know what I mean? Like he did against, uh, oh, what's the other UK heavyweight with the braids? Uh, damn. What's that cat that he knocked out, man? Oh, this shit gonna bother me. Somebody gonna bring it up. I forgot dude's name. Damn, what's the dude's name? Fuck. The Joe Hanks versus I got that cat Luis name. Ortiz in November on Fox TV. Joe Hanks versus who? Luis Ortiz. In November on Fox TV. Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz by Vicious KO. Look, Joe Hanks at one point in time was an undefeated prospect, up and comer. Him and Ruiz actually fought when they're both undefeated. Um, Hanks was uh, we actually saw Hanks fight. We we seen him fight. We yeah, fought we Joyce. Did, yep. Um, Ortiz. I mean, I can sit here and try to break it down. Style. He's gonna catch him probably with a left through the guard, a straight left through through uh, through the guard and get him up out of there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> my man's. What's up, BFTB? <laughs> Calling me the reason, like Beanie Siegel. Yeah, yeah. The reason he's on YouTube. Salute to my man, BFTB. Uh, Jamal James back soon, repping our home state of Minnesota. Oh yes, Jamal James, man. I actually got. I did used to train with Jamal James, um, out at uh, Circle of Discipline in South Minneapolis. So, whenever some Minnesota guy, man, you know how biased I am with the Minnesota Cats, so I want to see Jamal James do well, man. I want him to rule the welterweight division. Yes, I know Crawford's there, Spence's there, all them cats, but shit, if Jamal can break through, man, that'd be love right there. But uh, I'm sure that fight would be at the Armory downtown. If it's here, it'd be downtown at the Armory. Levi Khan says, who's the best Minnesota heavyweight ever? I forgot who's name. Damn. Uh, it's the dude that fought Larry Holmes. He, he made Larry Holmes quit in the amateurs. What's that cat name? Blood, if you in here? Huh? I don't know. They go dead back there. Jam and smell like hella weed. Uh, damn, what's Andy fought Ken Norton? Oh, man. Not not Scott Ledoux, but the other cat. Blood, if you in here, Blood, who, who the hell am I thinking of, Blood? He beat Larry Holmes bad in the amateurs on TV, and Howard Cosell was making fun of Larry. Cosell was like Larry Holmes would never be a top a top pro. Damn, what's that cat name? He was like 40, he got to like 43 and 0 too. Damn, what's that cat's name, man? Dwayne Bobby. There we go. Appreciate that. Thank you. 
him and him and Scott Ledoux actually fought a big fight out there at the old Metrodome. The old Metrodome is where the Mall of America is at. For those of you that uh, heard of the Mall of America, um, some shit that I went to like once. When they built that big ass mall, man, I, was, I went there one time. I was like, man, I don't want to be in this damn thing. Walking. So much walking, it's ridiculous out the Mall of America, but that's where the old Viking Stadium was at, out there in Bloomington, Minnesota. My man Jupiter B, what it do, man? Uh, oh, it slipped your mind too, uh, blood? Yeah, Dwayne Bobby. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much it, man. That's all I really want to cook on, y'all. I ain't gonna keep y'all too long, man. Um, but I'm gonna keep putting out more and more content. And I know the more and more content I put out, more consistent I am, more people will show up to the live stream. Because if you're not consistent making videos, don't nobody know you're around? Don't nobody know when you're gonna go live? You know, I know how it works, man. So I'm gonna keep putting out some content, keep talking about these uh, topics, man. But uh, until I'm back, y'all be good. I'm gone.